Today we're taking a look at the SafeLogic Extreme, the newest of the SafeLock series from SecureM Systems. This is an EMP proof lock that works by entering a code as well as by dialing a, uh, a combination. I'll show you how this works. First of all, the entry pad is backlit so you can see it light up in the dark. And now to enter a code, you enter a six digit code and the lock opens. Now we also have a unique feature in that you can dial a combination and you dial a combination by raising this spin dial release and now you can turn the dial in order to dial a combination. I'll get a close up of that so you can see how that works. With the Safe Logic Extreme, in order to dial the combination mechanically, you simply raise the spin dial release. You'll see that it is top lit, so it actually shines some light down onto the, uh, the uh, dialing combination gauge here. And you can see that 0, 10, 20, as you rotate this, you're rotating it to the dialing sequence. This dials just exactly the same as a regular mechanical lock. So I go four times left until I reach the first number of my combination, which is 50. And I think I'm at four now. So that's 50. Then I go three times right until I see 25. So that's once. Twice. On the third time, I'll stop at 25. and I'm at 25. Now I go back to the right to 50 on the second time that I see it. So 50. And now I simply rotate the dial to the right until it stops and now I can open the safe. Once you close the safe you will spin the dial the combination off just like you would a normal mechanical lock and reset it at zero so you can engage the spin dial release and now you're back in electronic mode. And then finally we have the opportunity to open this lock using a Bluetooth application. So on my phone I can simply enter my combination, press unlock, and as long as I'm within range the lock will unlock for me. That's the SafeLogic Extreme by SecureM Systems. Today we're installing the SafeLogic Extreme from SecureM Systems. This is an electromechanical, EMP-proof, redundant lock system. Christine's going to help us with the installation. The first step in installing the SafeLogic Extreme is to open the safe door. Now with the safe door open, we're going to turn the handle so the bolts are extended and that will ensure that uh, during the installation process we don't accidentally close the door. Now we're going to remove the back panel of the safe door by undoing the screws. This, uh, uh, they're held on in a variety of different ways. This one happens to have screws around the perimeter, so we'll go ahead and remove the back panel. All right, with the back panel removed, we can now see the bolt work as well as the existing safe lock that's installed. And we're going to uh, now remove the, uh, the lock. Now that we've got the back panel of the safe door off, you can see the lock is mounted on a, on a mounting plate here. And we have a relocker plate, which is holding a relocker pin in place. The purpose of the relocker pin is to ensure that the safe is secure, even if the lock is punched off through the spindle hole. So, if this lock were to be punched off, this relocker plate would disengage with the relocker pin and the pin would fire into this hole, which would prevent the bolt work from being operated and would leave your safe secure, even if the lock was removed. So now we'll ask Christine to remove the relocker plate and disengage the uh, relocker pin. Perfect. So you can see the relocker pin has a spring-loaded um, uh, position here. When it's in its spring-loaded position, it's held up. When uh, the relock, uh, when the lock would be punched off, the relocker would fire, and it would prevent uh, the bolt work from being operated. So we're just going to move that out of the way for the time being, so that we can uninstall the lock. Now that the relocker plate's removed from the lock body, we'll remove the lock body from its mounting plate. First, disconnect the keypad cable. 
And now undo the three screws that hold the lock body in place. Great, now let's set the lock body aside and we'll go to the front side of the safe in order to remove the keypad. Now from the front of the safe, remove the keypad. This is usually done just by pushing up on the keypad itself. And remove. Now we'll remove the screws that were holding on the entry pad. So now we're ready to install the new SafeLogic Extreme. There are two components in the box, the uh, entry pad portion and the lock body. First we're going to work with the entry pad. So the first thing you want to do is ensure that this screw has been um, uh, uh, loosened so that you can remove the electronic components from the dial ring. And how we do that is raise this spin dial release and then pull the entry pad component off. You'll see on the back of the entry pad there's a battery box for your battery. But uh, we want to work first with the dial ring portion of the, uh, the entry pad, which is this portion here. In the hardware kit that comes with the SafeLogic Extreme, you'll see a spindle that is extra long. You'll need to cut that to length. And then there's two small uh, brass colored screws that are used to hold the dial ring on. There's a change key and there's three lock mounting bolts. And then finally, there's a small silver screw or bolt that is used to hold the um, uh, spindle to the dial ring. So with these accessories, we're going to now assemble the uh, SafeLogic Extreme on the safe. So now as we begin the installation process, there's a couple of things we have to do. We have to measure the width of the door from the where the keypad mounts on the front of the door to where the lock mounts on the back of the door. And we're going to use the spindle that Christine has here to show you how to do that. So insert the, the spindle through the spindle hole, and what you want to do is make sure that the, um, uh, the spindle is flush with the outside of the door, just like that. Now, with the spindles threaded through the door, we're on the inside of the door now, and we will just mark where the uh, spindle reaches the inside of the mounting plate. So the, uh, the, that mark that Christine's putting there is actually the thickness of the door, and we'll use that to cut the spindle as well as the plastic tube. Now we're ready to install the dial ring on the front of the safe door. First we're going to thread the, uh, the lock cable from the dial ring through the spindle hole, which we've done there, and now we'll position the dial ring in the spindle hole uh, and pull through the excess cable into the interior of the safe. Now that we've got it positioned, we're now going to uh, use the uh, brass colored screws in order to um, install the, uh, the dial ring on the front of the safe door. And these screws can be tightened, uh, not all the way down, I would say tighten them down and then back them off about a, a turn because we'll want to align the dial ring with the, uh, the mechanical lock on the interior. So that's good. Now that the first screw is installed holding the dial ring in place, we need to um, fix the second screw and that's done by rotating the dial ring 90 degrees so that you can line up the holes to gain access to the dial ring securement location. So now we install the second screw. And again, we're going to tighten this one down and then back it off about a turn. Perfect. It's now time to cut the clear plastic tube that came with your accessory pack. The clear plastic tube is designed to isolate the movement of the spindle as the mechanical lock opens and protect the lock cable on the electronic side. So we need to measure this for the door thickness, the thickness of the door that we measured previously with the spindle. So using the spindle marking that we had previously, we'll mark the tube, and now using a pair of scissors, we simply cut the tube at that length. And that'll be the correct length to be able to protect the lock cable while the spindle is being turned using the mechanical coat. 
It's now time to install the lock body. So the first thing we have to do is install the clear plastic tube that will protect that lock cable as it comes through the spindle hole. So you push that all the way through and it's going to hang outside of the uh, mounting plate about 3 eighths of an inch. That 3 eighths of an inch will then join into the back of the lock in that recessed hole where the spindle goes. And we also note that there are channels here for the lock cable to run in. So what we want to do is now orient the lock cable so that it'll run through this channel when we install the lock. So we're just going to tape that uh, uh, cable up in the, uh, this, this position in order to allow us to uh, easily handle that uh, cable running through the channel. And now we're going to go ahead and install the lock. There are three screws that come with the lock and we can just install those. We always recommend um, using a standard screwdriver as opposed to a power driver when, when we're installing a lock. It just gives you a little bit more control. And what we also do is we, uh, we tighten the locks um, diagonally across the face of the lock so that you tighten the first one and then move down to the bottom corner and tighten the next one. And this just ensures that we have even pressure on the lock body. All right, so now the lock body is installed, and the next step will show you how to align the cam to receive the spindle. Now that the lock is installed, we're going to install the uh, spindle. But before we do that, it's very important, and please don't miss this step, but it's very important to ensure that the dial ring is aligned at zero. So I'm just going to move closely here, and you can see that we've aligned it to zero. And now we'll close the spindle release and now that's locked at zero. And that's very important in order to orient the spindle correctly in the lock. It's now time to cut the spindle to length. You remember we measured the thickness of the door using the spindle. We marked that previously at the thickness of the door. Now what we need to do is add an inch and three quarters to that length in order to properly size the spindle. So we'll line that mark up with an inch and three quarters and then we'll mark off an additional inch and three quarters and that's the length that will cut the spindle. Now that we have the lock mounted on the mounting plate, we have to make sure that the cam inside the lock for the mechanical lock portion of the extreme is oriented correctly with the dial. So we've, done the, uh, we've provided an easy way to ensure this cam is oriented correctly. There are three locator holes on the back of the, uh, the lock body and in these holes you should see a full head of a Phillips screw. This, um, as long as you have the screws lined up in these locator holes, then your cam will be oriented correctly when you put the spindle in. If they're not oriented correctly, partially insert the spindle in order to turn the cam until you see those three screws line up in those three locator holes. With the cam oriented correctly, it's now time to insert the spindle. The spindle has one end that is drilled and tapped to receive a bolt. The other end we've cut off, obviously. We want to install the drilled and tapped hole first into the spindle insertion point and then push that all the way through until it stops. And it should be flush with the case. So that's installed correctly. At this point, the spindle has been installed and now we're going to install the bolt that ties the spindle to the dial ring. This is the uh, silver bolt that's included in your accessory package. So just screw that in until you uh, get it tight. Good. Now that the spindle has been installed, we're now going to tighten down the small Phillips head screws that were in the locator holes. And what this does is it clamps the cam against the spindle so that it's fixed at the spindle location as well. Make sure those are tightened down and then the, uh, the cam will be able to turn freely. If you find when you're turning the, uh, the spin dial that it is uh, binding, chances are one of these screws have not been screwed down tight enough. The next step is to ensure that the dial ring is um, being able to be rotated freely without binding. So raise the spin dial release and turn manually the, uh, the spin dial in order to ensure it's not binding anywhere. And that looks good. So now what we want to do is we want to tighten up those two screws that are holding on the entry pad. 
So we'll line up those holes again like we did previously, and then we'll use a screwdriver to tighten down those dial ring bolts. That's good. Good. And now return it to zero and snap down the spin dial release. Okay. Now it's time to install the electronic component that manages the electronic code of the safe lock. First thing you'll notice is on the back of the uh, entry pad there is a battery box where 9 volt batteries to fit. On the very bottom of the uh, battery box you'll see an embossed marking showing you positive and negative. Make sure you line the battery up correctly with the positive terminal and let's slide the battery in. You want to slide the battery in so that it connects with the spring coil contacts. And now what we're going to do is raise the spin dial release on the uh, entry pad and now we'll put the entry pad onto the, uh, the hub of the spin dial. Snaps in place. Now we'll rotate to the number 50 and we'll just tighten down the battery screw. There are two magnets inside the entry pad that hold the uh, entry pad onto the dial ring even if this screw is not fastened down but it just allows us to ensure that it stays there while you uh, position the screw to be able to screw it down and fasten the uh, entry pad onto the uh, dial ring. So now we'll rotate it back to zero and we will close the spin dial release. Now let's go ahead and test the electronic combination of the SafeLogic Extreme. Pressing the clear button or any button lights up the backlit touchpad and now you enter the default code of 123456. You'll hear the motor turns and now you can unlock the safe. Works exactly as designed. Now that we've installed the SafeLogic Extreme and tested the electronic combination, it's time to test the mechanical combination. So you do that by raising the spin dial release and on the spin dial release, you'll see that there are numbers here. So 0, 10, 20, 30, and so on. So to test the mechanical combination, all numbers are set on 50. So each wheel is set at 50. So we rotate four times to the left to 50. So that's once, twice, three times. And on the fourth time, we're going to stop at 50. And you want to slow down to get to that number. So we're 30, and stop right on 50, and then rotate back to the right until it stops. And the safe lock is open. Now that we've unlocked the safe lock using the mechanical combination, we'll show you how to re-secure your safe when you've used the mechanical combination. First, you'll want to rotate the dial at least once, but it's best practice to rotate at least four times to the left. This will scramble all of the wheels of the combination so that no one knows that any of the lines of the uh, wheels are lined up. And we go back to zero and then we re-engage the spin dial release and we're back in electronic mode. Now for probably the most important part of this installation of the safe lock, and that is the repositioning of the relocker plate onto the safe lock body. The purpose of the relocker plate is to hold this spring-loaded pin in place so that if someone were to attack this safe and remove the entry pad and knock this lock off through the spindle hole, this pin would fire down through this hole and prevent this uh, blocking mechanism from moving and opening the safe. So even with the lock off the safe, this mechanism is designed to protect the contents of the safe. So it's very important that we get this positioned correctly on the safe. For two reasons, one to protect your uh, contents, but secondly, if this is not positioned correctly, even if the lock is working, um, it still won't allow you to open it if this pin is engaged with this bar. So first thing we need to do is to re uh, take these two screws out that uh, hold the relocker plate from the lock body and then position this relocker plate such that it holds this pin up out of the way of this uh, engagement with this hole in the, on the slide bar. So we can do that. We've re pre-drilled this uh, plate to be able to do this, and we're going to engage the plate with the uh, pin, and now we're going to install the uh, relocker plate screws. Put one there. Okay, and now we'll do the second relocker plate screw into the back of the lock. All right. Now, 
So this pin is well engaged in this plate. It's held in securely by the two screws and we have a lot of clearance. We have about a quarter inch clearance but it's still engaged with this lower portion of the, uh, the um, relocker pin system. So that will be held out of the way. It's really important that you make sure that this pin is clearing this slide bar. The installation is almost complete. The final step in the installation of the SafeLogic Extreme is to make sure that you test the electronic and mechanical combinations at least three times before closing the safe door. So we've installed the back of the uh, the back panel on the back of the door, and now we're just going to go ahead and test the combination and open the handle. And you'll see that the lock opens as as designed. After six seconds, it'll relock again. You heard the motor relock. Now we'll test it one more time. And you can see you can either press the clear button or not, it doesn't matter. As soon as you uh, touch any of the numbers, that's going to be assumed to be part of your code. And it's locked again, and we'll test it one more final time. And this time, Christine will close the safe door. And close again. And that's the Safe Logic Extreme from SecureM Systems. This video will describe how to change the electronic code and the mechanical combination on the SafeLogic Extreme. This has been newly installed, so it has a default code of 123456, and it has a mechanical combination of 505050. We're going to show you in this video how to change both of those. So first we'll start with the electronic combination. Let's first of all open it with the electronic combination of 123456. And the lock opens. All right, we always want to do these changing uh, codes with the, the door open. So the door is now open and we'll go ahead and we'll change that code. How you change the code, the electronic code, is you first of all go into programming mode by entering six zeros. Now we can enter our existing code, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we enter our new code. We're going to enter 654321. And repeat. The code has now been accepted and we'll test it just to make sure it's taken properly. So let's go 654321. And the lock is open. So the electronic code has now been successfully changed from its default of 123456 to a unique number. We've chosen 654321, but you'd want to set it to a random number that only you know. Now that we've changed the electronic code on the SafeLogic Extreme, it's time to change the mechanical combination. And we do that by raising the spin dial release. And now you'll see that there is the dialing index, which is here and that's where we dial our normal combination, combination to. But this red mark is the um, changing index. So to change our combination, we need to dial the existing combination to this changing index. Since all our numbers are set on 50, we can rotate the dial four times left to 50 on the changing index. That's twice, three times, and on the fourth time we're going to stop at 50 on the changing index. So that's 30, 40, and 50, and get it right on that red mark, there you go, and stop. Now that we've dialed the existing combination to the change index, we're now going to insert the change key that comes with your accessory pack into the change key hole and unlock the wheels by rotating 90 degrees. Now we're ready to dial the new combination on the change index. So with the change key inserted and unlocking the wheels, we'll now dial our new combination. It's good practice to write down your combination and then write your plan for how to change this, just so you remember as you're doing it. So we put this yellow post-it note here to show that we're new, our new combinations will be 55, 27, 62. 
So, using the change index, we're going to dial 4 times left to 55. That's once, twice, three times, and on the fourth time we're going to stop at 55. Perfect. So now it's important to remember we're dialing it to the change index, not the dialing index. So that's our first number. Now we're going to set our second number, which is 27. So we're going to dial three times right to 27. So there's once, twice, and this time we've got to stop at 27. It's a bit difficult to see because you've got this shroud preventing you from seeing it. But there's 50, there's 40, there's 30, and we're going to stop at 27, which is 28, one more, 27, right there. Now we're going to go back to the left two times to 62 the second time we see it. So there's 62 the first time, and on this time we're going to stop at 62, and we want to stop right on 62. That's 50. 55, 60, 61, 62. Perfect. We've dialed the new combination in using the changing index, and now we need to lock the wheels in place. So you do that by going to the change key again and turning it to the right, and that locks the wheels in place, and now we can remove the change key. Your combination is now set. All right, so now that we've set the wheels by turning back the change key to its uh, position, all the wheels are locked in place at our new combination of 55, 27, 62. So let's now rotate the dial four times left to 55, and we'll check our new combination. So that's once, twice, three times, and on the fourth time, we're going to stop at 55 at our dialing index. That's 40, 50, 55. Perfect. And you see that we have 55 at our dialing index. Now we'll go three times right to 27. So that's once, twice, and this is on the third time we're going to stop at 27. That's 70, 60, 50, 40, slow down at 30, and then 29, 27. Perfect. And now we're going to go back to the left twice to 62. And we see 62 the second time. So that's the first time. Now the second time we see 62, we're going to stop. That's 40, 60, 61, 62. Perfect. Now dial to the right until it stops. And the safe lock is open. So we've successfully changed the code from its default of 505050 to the new code of 552762. This is the SafeLogic Basic from SecureM Systems. The SafeLogic Basic has two user codes, a default supercode of 111111, and the lock opens, or the default user code is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this particular SafeLogic Basic has what we call our Sherlock battery management system. So on the bottom here you can see there's a tab to pull and now you can unlock and release the battery compartment. Battery compartment slides in and then snaps into place with a Sherlock battery management lock. This system is a stainless steel housing and it can be paired with any four of any of our four uh, safe locks. The swing bolt, the dead bolt, the spring bolt, or the strike bolt. Any of our safe lock systems can also be AC powered simply by adding this junction box between the entry pad and the lock. Plug in an AC adapter at this port location and now you have an AC powered system and the battery becomes backup. So the SafeLogic Basic, this one with Sherlock battery management system, comes in chrome, comes in brass, comes in nickel, and also in black chrome. That's the SafeLogic Basic from SecureM Systems. Today we're taking a look at the ProLogic B01. 
The ProLogic B01 is the world's first Bluetooth activated safe lock system. The ProLogic um, has an LCD screen. You can open the safe lock as you normally would by entering the code on the, the keypad itself. The lock opens. Or you can use a smartphone in order to access the, uh, the lock. And here's how that would work. We provide an app that allows you to enter your code. And as you enter your code, you press unlock. It sends the information to the lock and the lock's now open. I can confirm on my app that the door has been opened. And on the app, I can do a number of different things. I can uh, uh, keep a, an audit log of uh, how many times the safe lock's been opened at what date and time. I can also um, specify the length of time that the safe lock is to be opened for, so per instance. So for instance, I could enter it now and say, leave it open for 20 seconds and the lock will remain open for 20 seconds. This, the app also allows you to connect to multiple devices. So you can, uh, if you've got more than one ProLogic B01 in your home, you can uh, connect to each of them individually. As with all of our safe lock systems, each entry pad is compatible with each of our different locks. So a swing bolt, a dead bolt, our spring bolt or non-dead latching, and then our strike bolt for interior door applications or cabinet applications. So that's the ProLogic B01, the world's first Bluetooth compatible safe lock system. This is the ScanLogic Swipe, one of SecureM's popular biometric safe locks. The ScanLogic Swipe is called a swipe because it uses a swipe sensor. You simply slide your finger across the sensor in order to gain access. It comes with one code, which is 123456-7890, a 10 digit code. It also comes with uh, the capacity for 10 fingerprints. I've already enrolled a, an administrator's fingerprint in this lock, so this video is going to show you how to enroll additional fingerprints. To do that, first press finger, then slide the administrator's finger. The administrator's fingers now uh, allowed the lock to open. Press and hold the finger button until the red and green lights appear. Now press finger again and it's in program mode. Now slide your finger once, twice, three times. The second fingerprint is now enrolled in the system. In order to open with the second, press the finger button and slide your finger. And the lock is open. It's that easy to enroll the second fingerprint in a ScanLogic swipe. 